When you come to the nunnery of Agios Theodoros on the Greek island of Corfu, you will find the place where a temple of Artemis was built in the early 6th century BC. In the foreground you can see the rectangular altar, which, as was customary in ancient Greece, was located in front of the east side of the temple. The temple was adored peripteros, with eight columns on the fronts and seventeen on the long sides. The building measured approximately 22 by 48 meters, the height of the columns is not known. Judging by the shape of the capitals, the temple was built very early in the 6th century. The western pediment is preserved in fragments and is now in the Archaeological Museum of Corfu. The relief gable is located in a pediment which is framed on all sides. It is the oldest surviving Greek stone pediment. It is 17 meters wide, 2.16 meters high in the middle and consists of 15 individual stone slabs. In the middle of the pediment there is a gorgon in the so-called Nilov position. This characteristic type of depiction is very common in the archaic period and refers to a running or flying movement. The head of the gorgon extends beyond the upper edge of the relief. If it were to stand upright, it would be higher than the pediment. The gorgon wears a short chitin with decorative trims. There are snakes in her hair, and her belt is also made up of two snakes. Behind her upper arms, the plumage of the gorgon's wings can be seen on the relief ground. In addition, the monster wears winged boots. To the left of the gorgon, as seen from us to the right, is a naked man. On the opposite side, you can see the front hoof of a horse on the upper arm of the gorgon. Remains of this horse can be found further to the left as seen from the viewer. Since it is a winged horse, it is Pegasus. Thus, the naked man is likely to be Chrysor. From the myths, we know that Pegasus and Chrysor were created from the blood of the Gorgon when she was beheaded by Perseus. Since the Gorgon is still alive in the middle of the pediment, Pegasus and Chrysor should not even exist yet. So they are only used to identify the Gorgon. Further outside in the pediment, a large panther follows. His head is depicted in frontal view, his body in profile. The fur of the big cat is decorated with concentric circle ornaments. The panther we see here is a little over three meters long. Its counterpart on the opposite side largely corresponds to it. Behind the panther sits an old man on a throne. He is threatened by an attacker. Nothing of this attacker has been preserved, except for the point of the lance pointed at the old man. The hand directed towards the chin of his counterpart is a familiar gesture. With it, the old man begs for mercy. Behind the throne there is a wall, which probably means a city. So this scene could refer to the Trojan king Priam, who is about to be killed by the Greek hero Neoptolemos. Behind the enthroned man, a dead, bearded man fills the pediment's corner. On the opposite side of the relief, two naked men are fighting each other. The left of the two is just throwing a thunderbolt at his opponent. Thus, it is Zeus who is probably fighting against a giant. There is also a dead man in the corner of this gable side. In the center of the pediment there is the gorgon as a sign of demonic power, while on the sides there are obviously mythological representations. However, the only figure that can be identified with certainty is Zeus. The panthers between the gorgon and the mythological scenes show the gorgon as Potnia Theron, that means as the mistress of the animals. The symmetrical arrangement of the figures is adapted to the gable triangle. The largest figure is the gorgon in the middle. The heads of the panthers are higher than their hindquarters. The losers of the mythological scenes are smaller than the attackers. Finally, the gable corners are filled with lying corpses. The proportions are not realistic. Rather, the figures adapt to the gable triangle. That's why the mythological battle scenes are much smaller than the panther figures. The dating by the shape of the capitals to the early 6th century BC is also supported by the sculpture. Thus, the head of Chrysor can be compared to those of Cleobes and Biton. Therefore, the pediment, and thus the temple, was probably built around 580 BC. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe so you won't miss new ones.